fees for dumping pollution into the atmosphere. They're just doing it, which is basically like treating the atmosphere as an open source. The, the way that language gets conflated in this debate, again, I pay a lot of attention to words, which is why I call it moral sense, but I also think we need to pay attention to whole sentences. And when somebody is using <laughs> the, the oil sands have created a mild case of Dutch disease in the Canadian economy, which is what the OECD report said, and they then linked that with, uh, this is before the recession, remember this is going to be an important, this, I'm going to keep playing back this 2008 recession and how it's impacted pipelines and energy policy and everything else. But up before the 2008 recession even hit, the OECD was saying that Canada had lost a couple hundred thousand jobs in manufacturing and open paper because of the rising Canadian dollar, which rose a lot compared to the U.S. dollar, actually became valued, more valuable than the U.S. dollar, as it rose with exports of bitumen. So, on an economic basis, it's not all great news. And if you're thinking like a country, you'd ideally like to produce oil sands at the same time that you have people producing other things for export. And the way to do that, and there's a lot on this if you want to just pull out a book from the libraries and don't spend too long on this sidebar, is uh, if you take the money off the table, and I think Ford has written about this a lot, this was Peter Rodney's plan, was that Northern Alberta's uh, bitumen should be developed on a managed basis, on a staged basis, so that you, and you would take whatever revenue, and he wasn't planning to put it at 1%, but whatever royalties you were collecting as a government, Put it aside the heritage fund. Keep it for a rainy day. Don't spend it and don't use it. Don't have your government living on oil rents. That is the analysis that Andrew Nicoforic has explained.